Hi, I'm Julie, keeper of my home. Have you ever wondered what that phrase means? What it means to be keeper of the home? The Greek translation comes from two words, meaning dwelling and to guard. So the woman is to guard her dwelling. In today's more practical translation, that would mean that women are to be fully aware of all the activities that go on in their home. Proverbs 31 says, She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. I believe that a woman's highest position and true dignity are in the home as a godly wife and mother. There is no greater joy or blessing that can come to her than when she bears children, loves them, and raises them to be Christ-like, living for God's glory. Whether or not you have children or a job outside the home, as a woman of God, you have the ability to create a positive atmosphere of love in your home and to those around you. Being a keeper of the home is not only my passion, but my true joy as I humbly serve God in what I do. This role is not insignificant. It is one of great purpose as we are teaching our children how to glorify God in all that we do. It is the role of older women to teach what is good, and so train the young women to love their husbands and children, to be self-controlled, pure, working at home, kind and submissive to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be reviled. As a homemaker, I get to influence and shape the future of our world. Whether or not you have children, whether you work outside the home or are a stay-at-home, you are a homemaker. The ministry of homemaking demonstrates the very heart of Jesus through ministering to and caring for those within the walls of your home. Jesus came to serve, not to be served. By serving our family and caring for our home in a way that glorifies God, we are living out the gospel. Even if our homes aren't in the greatest of shape, they're not perfect. Your dishes aren't done. Things haven't been picked up. The laundry still needs to be done. None of that really matters. If your family is feeling loved, protected, and accepted, that's all you need. That's when you know that as a homemaker, you have already made your home special. To be a keeper of the home isn't just cooking and cleaning. It's all those little curiosities and first-time discoveries with your children and your grandchildren. To teach homemaking is to teach life lessons while also creating a safe place to fail in those life lessons. This is just a little snippet of my favorite poem.
by William Ross Wallace. It's called The Hand That Rocks the Cradle Rules the World. Blessings on the hand of women. Angels guard its strength and grace. In the palace, cottage, hovel. Oh, no matter where the place. Would that never storms assailed it. Rainbows ever gently curled. For the hand that rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. Creating that connection to home for your family is to create strength, integrity, and confidence. Always remember that you are creating future keepers of the home, allowing the cycle of loving, molding, and glorifying God in all that you do to continue on in future generations. But that was not all. Some of the cars were filled with all sorts of good things for boys and girls to eat. Big golden oranges, red-cheeked apples, bottles of creamy milk for their breakfast, fresh spinach for their dinners, peppermint drops. I love my job as keeper of my home. Next to being a mom, it's the best job I've ever loved. I got to shape and mold our three boys when they were growing up. And now I'm shaping and molding their children whenever they come to our home to visit. What a great blessing that is. I love this job and I get so much joy in my heart from these wonderful children who look at me with their eyes just bright and shining and they're just starved for all these things to learn. And I'm teaching them. I'm molding them. I'm shaping them for this world that they have to someday face. What greater job is there? What greater purpose is there? than to teach and mold your children so that someday they too will grow up to be the keeper of their home.